In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today I want to talk about a very important topic, which is 40 things to do before Imam Mahdi. What I mean is, these are 40 things, and trust me, the list actually I realized when I was making the list, and I was thinking of all of the traditions of the Prophet ﷺ in regards to the Mahdi, the list is actually much more than 40. And even in this list I have, I think, maybe 43, 44. I'm not sure, we'll see how long it goes. But I realized the list could probably go up to 100. But the 40 basic things, right? So, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, learn about how ijma works. This is something Muslims have completely forgot. They don't remember how an Islamic organization works. If you remember the ahadith of the Mahdi, it talks about him taking bayah. Well, how does bayah work? What does it mean? What are the wordings of bayah? What type of words are used when you give bayah to someone? Will this bayah be a bayah of an amir of a jama? Will this be bayah of uh, the amir of uh, a, a khalifa? Which type of bayah will this be to him? What is sama? What is a thaw? To listen and obey. So <clears throat> these the issues of how a jama works. What would be the wordings of the bayah? And how it relates to sama wa ta, like the Prophet ﷺ said, "Amurukum bi khamsin, Allahu amarani bihinna." I order of you five things: bil jama'a, bil jama'a, wa sama wa ta, wa hijjati wa jihad fi sabilillah. I order a bayah: "Man ma ta wa laysa fi unatihi bayat al mata biyat al jahiliyah." Whoever dies without bayah has died in jahiliyah. So what is the purpose of this bayah? When did the Prophet first time take bayah? Was he, did the Prophet first time take bayah as a khalifa? Or did he first time take bayah as a leader of an organization? So this is the first point. And this is something if you are not aware of and don't have experience of because being in a jama'ah, having a leader on top of you who is a human being anyhow, uh, you know, it leads to conflicts. And how do you deal with each other? And how, you're not going to be able to work with Imam Mahdi and his group uh, because if you, if you can't deal with conflicts, if you can't deal with your ego being suppressed, um, if you can't deal with criticism of the organization, you might be angry that people didn't take your idea, right? So many issues. Learn about surviving on the farmland. This is based upon the ahadith of the Prophet wasallam. Uh, of uh, when you bring the ahadith together about what to do in the time of the malhama, because these are the phases that will go before the mahdi, what to do before the time of the malhama, how do we survive on a farm farmland? Do you know that if you have one cow, you know, and you have one acre of land, that one cow will give you milk for a whole year, right? You have a chicken, and you give it a small piece of land, small, you know, it'll eat, give you eggs. The you know, the hen will give you eggs for a whole year. And we've abandoned these natural ways that are just, you know, the you have a land and automatically the rain comes and next year you have uh, grass again or you have crops again, so on and so forth. Number three, learning self-defense. Jihad, obviously. Are you working out at home? Are you taking lessons in jihad? You should see what these doomsday preppers are doing. Just type that up into... Google, uh, I mean, into YouTube, do names prepper and see how much they're prepared, right? Um, are you learning self-defense? Are you able to protect your family? Are you at least trying, right? Because when you do dhikr of Allah, you'll be stronger. But you got to still put in your physical effort to where are you? How to break yourself down before Allah? How to, how to break yourself down to Allah and be a true beggar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Doing adhkar, reading Quran, if you're not in the habit of this, at a time where the Prophet specifically said and explained that your food will be dhikr, because a lot of times you're not going to have food. So your food is going to have to be dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you prepared for that? You know, <clears throat> we're, I'm going to come and talk a little bit about, but over here I'm just talking about the relationship between uh, you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that, you, you know, the Quran tells you and the Sunnah tells you what to do, but moment to moment, day to day, you have to have that mood in your heart to uh, to to guide you. Intellectual work at the collective level. Muslims have to discuss, okay, if the Mahdi comes, what will the Khilafah look like today? You know, what type of uh, an Islamic structure are we going to put in there? What will the economic system look like? Are there still going to be, uh, you know, it'll be based upon gold and silver, we know, but how will, for example, credit cards work, if they will at all work, right? What are other social 
systems that are, um, what about the social system? What will, how will we choose the Khalifa, the Khulafa? How will they be chosen? How will the court systems work, right? When we have Maliki, Shafi'i, Hanbali, we have all these different uh, fiqhs. How will they cooperate in, in running an Islamic court system, right? So until we're not talking about these issues at a serious level, we're, this Mahdi is not going to come till we're ready. Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. Allah does not change a people until they change themselves. So you're not going to get Mahdi is like some big gift, and you're not even ready to follow him, right? Someone said to Ali radiyallahu an <coughs> that you know uh, at the time of Umar such and such happened, at the time of Abu Bakr such and such happened, and and then Ali radiyallahu an responded, look at the people that were with Abu Bakr and Umar. There were people like me, and look at the people I have. Right? So, uh, riding horses, right? And when you're learning to ride horses, because the Prophet ﷺ, while talking about one of the battles that will take place in Syria at the end of times, the Prophet said they will be the best horse riders, right? And so even when you're, by the way, I uh, want to talk about intention. When you're doing these things, you can make your intention to be ibadah, and you'll get the reward. And many scholars have talked about how your, your intentions can outstrip your deeds, right? So learning how to ride horses, right? Uh, fighting with swords. This is also mentioned in the Hadith. Uh, do you know how to fight with swords? Do you know how to ride horses? We're wasting our time. Water issues. We all know that there are going to be water issues. So what type of technology do we need to build to take water from the air and put it into our cups? What are the other technologies, low-tech low technologies that we can use to uh, to get water in the time of being in the wilderness, right? How do you find water in the Middle East if you don't have any uh, any way of getting water? You know, are there any techniques for that? Decolonization of the Muslim mind. This is something that needs to be done at a mass level and is a topic in itself. Because like I said in one of um, the discussions I was having earlier, that if our mind is 80% colonized, we're westernized without even realizing it, and 20% is religious, then that's not really going to help us much. Understanding war strategies. You know, Imam Mahdi, if you read his, uh, what he will be doing, you better know war strategies to be able to contribute. Have you studied the war strategy of Badr, the war strategy of Uhud, the war strategies of the Prophet, the war strategies of Khalid ibn Walid? Right? So how are you gonna like how are you gonna be this person that's gonna be able to be able to help? It's actually much deeper than that. Not only fiqh, but knowing the asuls, the the um uh, and 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 uh knowing the asuls and not only knowing the fiqh but the qada, the qada, how a judge rules. So that you can actually give a proper hukum, uh, 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 you know, knowing the asuds of the deen. And I would not say everyone has to learn this, but a substantial number of people have to learn this, the asuds of fiqh and so on and so forth, so that they can be there. Because Imam Mahdi, and I'm going to talk about this, he's not going to be very knowledgeable in the deen. He's going to change overnight. He's not going to be like Omar bin Abdul Aziz. And I'm going to talk about this in another topic, the link between Omar bin Abdul Aziz and the Mahdi. I will be talking about that uh, one of these days. The Tawa of the Khulafa. There has to be some people that have studied. What are the fatwas of Abu Bakr? What are the fatwas of Umar? I have a YouTube video series on that. What are the fatwas of Uthman? What are the fatwas of Ali? Right? I, ideas of each of the Mujtahids. What were the ideas of the Mujtahids? What were the ideas of Umar bin Abdul Aziz? What were the ideas of, um, let's say, uh, you know, uh, Abu Ash Ashari radiallahu uh, what were the ideas of Iqbal? What were the ideas of Shawlullah? What were the ideas of Mujad al Fsani? What were the ideas of so many of the great Salahuddin Ayyubi? Uh, so what were the great ideas of these great people? Because they were confronted with very similar situation that, you know, because the Muslim Ummah had one fall, right? After the Abbasid Empire was destroyed by the Tatars and then the Crusades came, there was a whole complete lull. Then after that, the Ottoman Empire came and raised us back. So we have to see what was in that, the scholars of that time period, what were they talking about? What were their concerns? How did they deal with it? How did the second rise happen? Uh, understanding number 13, the seerah of the Prophet <coughs> you know, healing psychologically. I, I talk about this in, this in the sense of decolonization of the mind, but just general, we are victimized, we are hurt. And so that how, because in order to be 
uh, effective, you need to be healed psychologically. Number 15, herbal medicine. You're going to be traveling, you're going to be in war. Medicine of the Prophet ﷺ, herbal medicine, uh, other types of medicine, you know, which, which ayat of the Qur'an help uh, in healing. Um, the Tafsir of Qur'an, especially based upon the works of Shaulullah, Mona Farahi, and Dr. Sarahi, are going to be very important during this time. And, uh, and many of the ideas of Sheikh Imran Hussain are going to be very important during this time. Understanding money and trade laws. How are you going to trade with people you don't even know the Islamic laws? You know, you have your gold and silver, but then how, hunting. Do you know the hunting laws of Islam? Do you know how to do hunting? If you're not like really, if you're if you're just all the time just researching, researching, and you're not actually doing anything, and you're not being holistic, you know, then you you're gonna lose out, right? Is what's the use of knowing all this if you can't like if you're not doing these things? So I'm giving a list of forty things that you should start thinking about and just take them one at a time, one at a time, right? Hunting. Making fire, cooking, carpenter, ironsmith, etc. Even how to tie a knot with a rope. Something as basic as that. A lot of us don't know. Making clothes, making armor. Shower in the cold water. Can you do it? Can you train yourself to do that? Knowing the prayers, of, the, prayers the salawat, looking at the sun. Right? Knowing the moon sighting rules. Right? Gold and silver. You have to have gold and silver to be able to trade, so on and so forth. You know, all things of security that I mentioned in self-defense. Radiation, free space. What are you going to do when bombs are going off and there's radiation there? You have to know what to do, where to go, what to do. Solar, wind, and water power. Again, about low technology. You have to be able to use, and it's not that everyone has to know this, but some people have to know about this stuff to be able to help, right? Understanding the Medina model in detail, the Medina model that the Prophet ﷺ built in Medina, we should know that. Uh, tahajjud, you got to be praying Tahajjud if you're expecting to be in the army of the Mahdi, because all those miracles are, and all those victories are not going to happen because of our effort. They're going to happen because of our closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Create awareness of Islamic eschatology in the Mahdi, right? Number 30, this has to be done again at a mass level, right? Because how are you how are you going to create the people that you have to create the people that are going to go towards the Mahdi and work for it, right? Memorize the first and the last ayat of Surah Kahf for at least that much for every Friday that you can read it because you'll be confronting the Jal. How are you going to protect yourself? You don't know Surah Kahf. Duas of protection. The basic duas. Eating healthy, you know, fasting, intermittent, intermittent. Uh, fasting, right? Eating in, in, in a way that uh, that actually makes you healthy, right? Shema'at uh, al-Tamizi, knowing what the Prophet looked like. If you read some of the traditions regarding Mahdi, it seems like there will be a great emphasis on the looks of the Prophet ﷺ, meaning they will be wearing the turban and so on and so forth like the Prophet did. Population is going to dramatically decrease in times. Allah's mercy. Do you have a will, right? Uh, collaboration, right? You have to create your own. Uh, you could say jama. You have to create your jama, but uh, but besides your jama, you have to collaborate with other Muslims. Low technology mastery. Somebody has to work on this. It's very important being married and having children at this time because it's going to be a time of great fitna. You have to be married to be able to protect yourself. Um, the Prophet said وسلم, that behind every man there would be 40 women, right? How to establish a masjid? You have to know the rules of that. How to establish a proper masjid? Making and traveling with a boat. How do you think people all over the world are going to get to the Mahdi? They're not going to all walk, right? You have to know how to make a boat and travel with a boat, ride a boat, have a compass, right? Non-digitalized resources. You you might not be able to know everything, but at least you can have things in a non-digitalized way where you have enough uh, resources where that you can take with you wherever you are. That um, number forty-three is extremely important. Arabic language. How are you going to work with the Mahdi if you don't know Arabic? Forty-four. Find someone more pious than you to be with. Good company, right? 
And and this, by the way, mentions to uh, Hijra plans. What are your plans to make Hijra to the Mahdi or to a safe location first before the the collapse of the system? And then from there, you know, you make a Jama'ah, you choose an Amir, you do Bayra, you do Shura. You're going to have to get all this training so that by the time you're with the Mahdi, you already know everything is just natural, okay? This is, we're going to choose an Amir, we're going to give Bayra to him. You know, people nowadays don't even know that, how do you organize Muslims? Through elections? This is how we did it? No, it's through the process of Bayra. And so, uh, it is extreme, and this is just a short list. This is just a short list. You can make your own list and start working. And trust me, you know, and I'm going to make a special video about this. But if you are serious, and if you really desire to get close to Allah, then your schedule will be like clockwork. Your schedule will be like clockwork. Because the people that get near Allah, they don't like to waste time. And the people that that have blessing in their time, they're always busy. You know, he's here teaching class. You know, Sheikh Amar Hussain, Dr. Asr Ahmed, or others, great scholars of Islam of the past, they never liked being late. They don't like being late, right? They like to be on time. It's no, And they work like clockwork. This is the time I wake up for the Hajjah. This is the time I pray my Fajr prayer. This is the time for my Adhkar. This is the time for my workout. This is the time. Everything is like clockwork. You got. If you don't get to the point of being like clockwork, you're not going to be able to be with the Mahdi army. Because that's the type of, 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 of mentality and self-mastery you're going to need to get from wherever you are to there on your own. Okay? So I just wanted to end with this. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us for his deen. Amin. Allahumma amin. Ya Rabbi. And the, the most important, if you don't do any of these things, please do one thing. Learn the Quranic Arabic. You've got to be able to communicate with all the Muslims in the language that is common to them. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas.